welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about litter mate syndrome. So in a vlog a few weeks ago, I guess, um, I talked about litter mate syndrome and basically what can happen if you keep puppies from the same litter or if you have puppies that are the same age. And you guys said that you were very interested in the topic, so I decided to make a whole video about it. And if you guys have not subscribed yet, be sure to do so because I make a lot of videos about animals and you will not be disappointed. So what is litter mate syndrome? So basically litter mate syndrome is the negative effect of keeping multiple puppies from the same litter or puppies that are the same age. You might get puppies from a different litter, but let's say they're both eight weeks old. Uh, so they're very close in age. That can also uh, develop litter mate syndrome. They don't exactly have to be related, but it's basically just having puppies and raising them together. For example, this came up on my channel because I kept three puppies from our corgi litter. And this one is Daisy. Hello. Litter mate syndrome is when puppies bond only to each other and they are unable to form a relationship with the human members of their family. And that basically makes them untrainable, they're out of control, they don't listen to their family at all, they're afraid of other dogs and people, and they're basically unable to cope with anything in their environment, especially when separated. Another result can actually be that, are you putting your head backwards? What are you doing? Fall asleep? <laughs> Another result can actually be that they fight with each other constantly and not just play fight, like actually aggressive dog fighting where they become dangerous to each other. And basically this is not good because since they will not give you any attention, it is impossible for you to train them. Now it's important to remember that litter mate syndrome is a risk. It's not something that's automatically going to happen if you have two puppies from the same litter. But if it's not taken care of right away, the result of litter mate syndrome will be that you will have to give up one of the puppies to basically rehome it, separate them completely, and that's the only way to solve the issue. But that's basically the worst case scenario, and you can work very hard at making sure that your puppies do not get litter mate syndrome. So it is possible to have more than one, and for this to not happen. Now in this video, I'm gonna be telling you about what I'm doing to prevent litter mate syndrome. So my puppies are about 14 weeks old now, I think, and uh, they've been doing great. They've actually been amazing. They're so well behaved that even I'm impressed by how well they are doing. So they haven't been showing any of these negative behaviors that I was talking about. And so this is some of the stuff that I have actually been doing with them. Now in about six months from now, I will be uploading a video to continue this talk to basically show how it has gone since then and how the puppies are doing and if they have had any sort of issues, any behavioral problems, and how they're training with. Because I am doing two things that really freaks people out. I'm keeping three puppies from the same litter and I am not taking them out into public until they are fully vaccinated. A lot of people tell me that this will result in my dogs having extremely bad behavioral problems and not being socialized correctly. So in a few months, I'm gonna be making a video to prove that you can keep litter mates and keep them protected from disease and still have great dogs that are very well socialized. So definitely subscribe to my channel to see that. And the other thing is that I've actually kind of already done one of these. So none of my dogs are taken out into public until they are fully vaccinated. So my two adult corgis, Luna and Clark, did not go anywhere like PetSmart, the park, um, or anything like that until they had all their vaccinations. And they're actually great. We go out to corgi meetups at the dog park and they do so well with other dogs and humans and they listen to me the whole time regardless of the distractions. Now, like I said, it is not impossible to do well with two puppies that are the same age, but it is a lot of work and it is going to be twice as much work as just having one puppy. And that's why a lot of people advise against it and that's why some shelters won't even allow you to adopt dogs from the same litter. But like for us, we were only going to have one litter of corgi puppies and the female was going to get fixed. So we wanted to keep all the dogs that we wanted to have from the first litter because we weren't going to get any more chances. So we kept three of them. Now first thing that I think is really important, and this is just with multiple dogs in the same house, is to have names that do not sound alike. So names for example like Evan and Kevin, that may sound cute, but don't name your pets that because that's confusing. We can understand the difference between those two names, but they can't. You want names that have different sounds. So for example, Clark, Luna, Bruce, those are all different sounds. They don't sound alike. Um, but if you're gonna have something that starts 
with the same couple of letters, those might sound too similar for the dogs and they might not be able to distinguish them. Now the next thing is different crates. As soon as the rest of the litter mates were gone, we separated our dogs into different crates, one in each room. Oftentimes people will get two puppies and they will get one crate and put them both in there because they're like, well, the point to get two was so that they would be friends and have each other. So we want them to be in the same crate together. That's not what you want to do. You want them to be independent of each other. So at first they all had separate crates in different rooms. Now they're not really using crates so much anymore because they're really coming along in potty training. And most of the time, if they have an accident, it's our fault. The next tip is one-on-one -on -one training. If you have two dogs, that means two training sessions. So always take your dogs out individually and train them by themselves so that you can give your undivided attention to your dog. If you're having to split your attention between two dogs, you're not gonna be able to train them. In order to train a dog, you have to give them your undivided attention. Take them each out on their own. So whether you're taking them to potty or you're taking them on a walk or anywhere else, take them one at a time. And it's okay, you know, you're gonna eventually take both dogs to go on a walk but make sure you give yourself time to take just one dog. And that will help you bond with that dog and that dog will be bonding to you instead of only bonding to its litter mate. Give one-on-one -on -one time to each dog. This is gonna help so much with bonding. So don't just spend time cuddling with both dogs at the same time, playing, petting, and all of that. Give them individual time. And if there's multiple people in your house, that's great because then you can each take a puppy and work with it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you if you have two puppies or if you're thinking about getting two. Be sure to subscribe because this topic is gonna to be coming up again in future videos. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.